Welcome back everybody. Thanks for stopping by and in this video we're gonna be taking a look at our next set of topics It's actually gonna be concatenating a few into into one because you know the topics aren't terribly huge to cover So we're gonna be taking a look at uh, BPDU guard. We're also gonna be taking a look at BPDU filter Now if you've never dealt with either one, they're actually pretty easy to work with if you're um you know, if you have any idea of how they actually work, it's just a couple of lines of config in order to make them work. So what we're going to demonstrate really quickly is um, just doing a basic simulation as to, you know, what the particular feature actually does. So, mm, excuse me. What we're going to do is uh, take a look at Switch 2. Now, one of the things that I'm doing on Switch 2 that I need to to actually go through and walk you guys through is we need to understand what exactly is a BPDU guard doing. Well, BPDU guard is, uh, there's two different variations of this for BPDU filtering. You have the BPDU guard feature and then you have the BPDU filter feature. Now the difference between the two is if a BPDU is received in on a port where BPDUs should not be received in on, then with BPDU guard enabled, the port will go into error disabled. So it's almost like a port security type of operation as the violation mode. So it's gonna basically error disable the port. The filter command is simply going to drop those BPDUs as they come in, and that's gonna be the extent of it. There's really nothing more to it than that. So what I can do, and it's going to break the network when I do this, but I'm not gonna sit around and uh, keep it there. I'm just gonna show you what it's doing. So if I was to do a um, right now we have a trunk link on switch two towards switch one. If we do a show run interface gig zero slash one, we have, oh, well, it's not a trunk link, excuse me. So interface gig zero slash one, switch port trunk and cap dot one Q, switch port mode is trunk. And we go ahead and bring up switch one while I'm at it. And hit the enter key and right click, rename tab, switch one. And I'll swap these guys. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we'll do a show run interface gig zero slash one. Switch port trunk and cat dot one Q. Switch port mode is trunk. So now we have that squared away. We go back to switch two and we jump out of global config. If I do a show spanning tree interface gig zero slash one detail. One of the things you're going to see, and on a per VLAN basis is where you're going to see this, is on VLAN 1, this is always going to be VLAN 1, you're going to see other uh, communication sent, is you're going to see uh, this sent and received variable. Now, the um, what this basically means is, so far there's been 20 BPDUs, or bridge protocol data units, sent out on this port and received in on this port. And... Uh, for the other VLANs, we haven't we've sent out 19 for each, but we haven't received any in for either. Now you might say, well, why are you not receiving any? Well, if we were to do a show interface trunk on switch two gig zero uh, zero slash one and one slash one, we are sending three VLANs out for one ten and one hundred on switch one though. We do a show interface trunk. We're only doing it for VLAN one. So if I did show spanning tree interface gig zero slash one detail, I'm only gonna I'm gonna send and receive only for VLAN one because I only have one VLAN created. So if I was to add VLANs, for instance, I could type in VLAN ten and VLAN one hundred, and then after a short, very short period of time, once those particular, uh, they're designated blocking at the moment. And the reason why they're designated blocking is because of the fact spanning tree is trying to figure out what's going on. Show spanning tree. And we would see that for those particular VLANs, we are in the blocking state. Now they're gonna eventually migrate over to learn and all that stuff. And eventually it'll go to forwarding. So show interface trunk on switch one. Right now we only have VLAN one because it's forwarding. So VLANs and spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned. And now we have them all. So if we go back up to this command that we had before and hit the up arrow a couple times, now you're gonna see it's sending and receiving traffic for both. 
It's a little slow sometimes, but you see it now. We said we see it sending and receiving. That's why. So now that we have that understanding, we can go to the port level. And what I'm going to do is on switch two, I'm going to go to give it a second to respond. We're going to go to global config. All of a sudden, now the CPU is like. Must have been a spike somewhere in the config. I wonder if there's a CPU spike. Oh, not really. It's doing pretty good, actually. So we'll type in. Uh, an interface gig zero slash one. I will come in here and I'll type in switch port, and then we have the. Uh, I'm sorry, spanning tree, spanning tree, and we have BPDU, and we have either filter or we have guard. Now, if we put fil a guard in place, it says don't accept BPDUs on this interface. Now, what's going to end up happening if we do that? The port will get error disabled because there will be a BPDU received. And if we put the filter command, we won't send or receive BPDUs on this interface. So it's transparently filtering them out. So I can do either one. I'll start off with guard and we can see exactly how that comes into play. A BPD guard um, and enable. And hit the enter key. Now that's going to be enabled and what's going to end up happening is spanning tree BPDU guard is going to block the port and uh, because a BPDU was received, so do show interface status. And now the port has been error disabled. So now all we have to do is take the command off and shut the port down. First, you have to manually reset it. And then no shut the port to bring it back online. And there we go. So that fixes it. Now, if I do show spanning tree for interface gig 0 slash 1 detail, we're going to have a number of BPDUs are going to start to get sent over and over and over again. Now, if I was to type the command spanning tree, BPDU filter enable, and then do a uh, show interface gig zero slash one detail, we should not see any incrementing of the the BPDUs coming in or out. They should whatever whatever value they were at when we enable the command. That's where they should stay, and that's exactly what's happening. We see an EIGRP is having a little bit of a getting a little bit of a workout at the moment, but um, I think that's probably what's driving the CPU up in the switch. But that's exactly what you see. So the amount of uh, BPDUs has not incremented, uh, even though they're still being sent and received from a control plane perspective. They're not actually being um, sent or received on the port. All right, so that removes the command. And at this point in time, that's pretty much it for the commands and the capability. Um, I'm actually going to say undebug all because I don't want to didn't don't want to leave a debug running because that's just going to be a higher. Um, higher CPU processing on this on the device. So that's pretty much it for BPDU. There's really not a whole lot to cover when it comes to them. So pretty straightforward for the most part. Now it's another command that's available for spanning tree is going to be root guard. Now root guard, if we were to come in here and do a show spanning tree and hit the enter key, one of these two devices, either switch one or switch two, is going to be the root for these VLANs, right? And currently, um, switch one is the root. And you might say, well, how do I know that? Well, I can tell that because right now, the, the root ID is located on gig zero slash one, and we are connected to switch one on gig zero slash one. That's how I know. So what I can do is, if I was to go to switch one, and I'm going to enable command globally called spanning tree, I'm gonna say, uh, guard and I oh, know I'm sorry it's at the interface level so interface gig 0 slash 1 spanning tree and we type in guard and we type in root okay 
by typing this command in here. So it says we have enabled root guard on the port. Now if I go to switch two and I go to global config and I type in uh, spanning tree VLAN uh, one through 4094, let's, let's just do VLAN one. I don't wanna freak everybody out. And then type in the priority is gonna be, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna say root and I'm gonna say primary. Now by doing this, what's gonna end up happening is on the other switch, on switch one, we're gonna have a problem. It's going to say, okay, uh, root guard blocking on port gig zero slash one, and the reason why it's blocking, and I don't know if it's actually gonna give us a show spanning tree um, root and hit the enter key. So right now, the, the root is supposed to be us. And I don't know if there's a guard Serve spinning tree detail. What should be happening is when we send and receive data, the root should be us, and it is. So if you do a show spinning tree, uh, one of the things you're going to see is here is it says root inconsistent. Basically, what this means is switch two has now configured a lower priority bridge ID, which means it's superior. So a superior root ID is going to in turn trying to change who the root bridge is in the spanning tree network. So in this particular case, the problem that we have is switch two is trying to tell switch one, I'm now the root for VLAN one. And we've enabled root guard on switch one on gig zero slash one. Because we've enabled root guard on this particular port right here, because of that, and a superior BPD has been received inbound on that port, it's gonna go into root inconsistent, which means if we do a show interface status, the port doesn't go down, but it, if we do a show spanning tree for VLAN one, we look at that, notice that says root inconsistent, and it's got broken. If we do a show spanning tree interface gig zero slash one detail, we're gonna see that it says that it's rooting consistent, meaning somebody else is trying to become the root. So in order to fix this, we have to tell switch two to stop being the root for that particular VLAN. So if we were to come in here and type in no spanning tree VLAN one root primary, and then go back to switch one, as soon as the port stops receiving BPDUs in, we're gonna unblock the port and uh, go from there. So this is something that as long as you're using syslog, and you are monitoring what's happening, you're gonna see that happen. Syslog is gonna spark and go, hey, someone's trying to become the root on this port, and then you can dive into it and figure out what's going on. This is how you protect the port. Now you might say, is any traffic being forwarded? Um, no. So if we were to look back up at the um, 127, that could be hit, a little hit or miss. It should not be because the port is broken. So traffic for switch one, uh, I'm sorry, traffic for VLAN one should be almost negligible because from a control plane perspective, you have a control plane issue. So the port should not be, it's still sending and receiving BPDUs as normal, but uh, whether or not the, uh, the traffic is received in, that's, um, I'd actually have to go and create VLAN interfaces for on switch one and switch two for VLAN one and ping inside of VLAN one to guarantee that it goes over VLAN one. But that's something I'm gonna let you guys play around with, test that out to see if it's actually going to do that. I'm pretty sure that it does. Uh, it does stop the traffic. Um, you know what, show IP interface brief. Let's give it a whirl. So config T interface VLAN one IP address of 192.168.1.1 slash 24. No, shut the port. And then on switch two, we'll type in uh, show IP interface brief. We'll type in interface VLAN one. IP address is 192.168.1.2 slash 24. And no, shut that port.
So now what should end up happening is if we were to go and do a, a ping to 192.168.1.1, it does work. So if we were to go back to global config and do that spanning tree VLAN one root. Okay, so now switch one should go root and consistent. It's got, the root guard is blocking gig zero slash one on VLAN one. So if I was to come in here and do ping 192.168.1.1 and hit the enter key, the port of the traffic is being blocked. I was pretty sure it was, but I couldn't tell, I couldn't guarantee it. And the reason why is because from a Spanish tree perspective, there's a problem in the control plane. So from a, from a uh, loop free per, uh, loop free perspective, there's a problem inside of the network. So rather than just let traffic be sent, I have to stop the traffic from being sent in order to guarantee the traffic is loop free. And that's where that comes into play. So if I was to say no span tree VLAN one root and switch one says, okay, well, after a couple of seconds, that problem should go away and it's unblocking the port. We go back to switch two, we hit the up arrow and after an ARP entry resolution, the traffic should, it might take it some, a couple of seconds for it to actually come unblocked. So do show spanning tree. If we look at, okay, so right now it's in, there's a dispute. So it's still got to clear itself out. So we're learning right now, even though I've got rapid spanning tree protocol enabled, it'll take, it'll still take a couple of seconds for it to just not do this anymore. It's not going to be an instantaneous thing. So we're in learn, now we're in forward. I go back to switch two, I hit the up arrow, and voila, my pings work again. So it only took me a couple of seconds to do that and test the capability out, but now you know that it will actually block traffic. So that's basically how that comes into play. Beyond that, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much it. Um, any method you want to do to test that out, you can definitely use if you want to, and stuff like that. Uh, there's a few other minor commands uh, that I want to cover just real quickly because they're uh, they're not really worth a demonstration per se, but they are worth a, this is how something would work. Um, one of those commands is called protected ports. And protected ports is kind of considered to be like poor man's private VLANs. And what I mean by that is if two ports are placed inside of the isolated port, designation with private VLANs, what's going to end up happening is uh, communication between those two devices is going to be dropped, which means that if I put if I put PC2 and PC1 into two different isolated VLANs on switch 2, they wouldn't be able to communicate with each other. But if you don't want to go to the, the length of uh, creating private VLANs, you can go to Gig02 and Gig03, and let's go ahead and try this out real quick. We'll go and on here, we'll say on, we'll ping 10.1.1.10.1.1.2. And we should be able to ping the other end, which means that ping 10.1.1.2 should be PC1. So we type in IP config. I am PC1 is 10.1.1.2, PC2 is 10.1.1.3. Because I have that and I can ping back and forth. They can ping between each other. And if we look on switch two, we do a show Mac address address table dynamic uh, for VLAN 10. We can see those ports are exchanging Mac addresses, right? But if I was to go to those ports and type in interface range gig zero slash two through three and type in switch port protected and hit the enter key. And if I try to ping that again, um, what should happen is the ports should not be able to talk to each other. So what should happen, at least from my testing, it did not, they didn't, were not able to be not pingable anymore. Um, yeah, so now they're not pingable. So if we do a show Mac address table dynamic VLAN 10, 
the macros are still reachable, right? If we sh now, but if we tried to ping the default gateway, that should be reachable. But ports that are uh, any ports that are configured with the protected command should not be able to talk to each other. Any ports that are not configured with the protected command should be uh, should be allowed to communicate with each other. So. Um, if you wanted to limit that, that's what I refer to as a poor man's uh, private VLANs. Um, so you have that capability there. So if you don't want two devices to be able to communicate with each other, then that's basically how that would come into play. So that's pretty much it for that. I'm actually going to remove that capability because I do not like to have ports blocked if I don't need to. And I'll pull that command off. So that's pretty much it for the layer two topics to, to round it out. Uh, there's really not much more to it than that. Um, and go from there. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.